suckers, it's Timmy Timmy Joe. Making videos, computers, on the internet, finally back, and yeah, I got one. Yo, future Timmy Joe here, and yeah, I'm wearing the same shirt, unintentionally. Uh, this guy launches today. And I'd filmed this previously thinking it had already come out because the timelines on it releasing changed, which made me have to actually keep this video from being uploaded for a little bit. But here it is, it's the Galahad AIO, and as we'll see in these tests, it does really, really well. And for all intents and purposes, it's one of the best looking of the group. So uh, Lee and Lee, links in the description. Thanks for sending this over. And then uh, 10900K, don't have it anymore. I'll make a whole video about it once uh, once things settle down here, but uh, it, DOA or not DOA, but it, it lasted this video and then it was it just it died. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I should already got my money back though, so at least there's that. I'll talk about it later. Watch the video. This guy does pretty good, but uh, not the best. <laughs> this is about this is about a cooler shootout with the top tier gaming CPU, the hottest CPU huge watts, huge frequencies coming out of it. And uh, it's been about six months I've been collecting 360 mil AIOs and promising videos on them, so we're finally getting to them. And uh, interesting results, not incredibly uh, dynamic results, if that makes any sense. But uh, yeah, we'll get to some conclusions here. And uh, ultimately, there isn't as much variance as you'd think, especially considering Kraken X73, Asetek. You know Asetek, they're the company that basically made all AIOs before now, before, you know, we'll say a couple years ago. Uh, and if anyone else tried to make their own, they'd sue them because they hold a patent for putting a pump on a block. All of these have different blocks, different pump designs. They're all different, which is very different than a few years ago where three or four of these out of the five would have had uh, Asa Tech blocks on them, so that's interesting, but you'd think there would be a little bit more variation on the results considering that fact. So all these are are uh, not Asa Tech except for the Kraken, even Corsair, and I know uh, the first liquid freezer here was definitely an Asa Tech design. Uh, Lee and Lee's completely new to the game. Deep Cool's been making their own stuff for a while. It's surprising they're all different, but they're all very much the same as we will find out. So test situation here, thanks to ASRock for the Tai Chi motherboard, getting this 10900K to 5.3 gigahertz at 1.335 volts, a little bit higher than the volts I posted on Twitter. I said to uh, uh, 1.32, 1.335 is what I got with this thing. I need a little bit more to get uh, it stable once I started running IDA64 10 minutes at a time, 100 times. So uh, yeah, but fairly stable. Uh, I didn't have, have any issues at 1.335 volts. Uh, we got 4,000 megahertz Trident Z Royal RAM. They sent this for this project, for this updated test bench. This will be my GPU test bench once this is all set up. And uh, I guess what we're gonna do here is find out which cooler I should pair with this. Uh, you know, ongoing here. And uh, I got my, uh, or I had my, uh, you know, ideas of which one I'd be choosing in the end, and I wasn't far off. So, 5.3 gigahertz, 1.335 volts, and we hook up all these coolers. We run IDA64 FPU cache CPU stress test for 10 minutes and do it. I did it twice per cooler just to make sure that there wasn't some weird variation, as well as I did do some retests just in case I thought it was a mounting problem or something like that, uh, as we'll see. But uh, I guess we'll start off with the worst one on the list here. Which one do you think is gonna be the worst? Deep cool. Wow. Oldest one on the block here too. I think uh, all of these guys are newer. That one released about a year and a half ago and they haven't done any major changes with their uh, 360EX or three, uh, 280EX, their Castle series. Uh, I think that they only even started shipping them in the US like last year, but uh, that might be why this one ends up being the worst. So a couple of metrics I'll explain how easy it is to mount. Uh, talk about that quickly. RPMs on the fans and the sound of the fans. Uh, and then running, uh, once we get this all set up, I run the FPU stress test. I measured uh, the time it took to get to 85 degrees. And then I measured the temperature after 10 minutes, the max 
total temp or like the uh, the maximum temperature registered after that time. And uh, I compared all of them, and unfortunately, the Deep Cool Castle was the worst. But they're all within five degrees of each other, so it's not like it's that bad for the castle. The best result was 85 degrees, and the worst result was 90 degrees. And the worst result from uh, hitting start to 85 degrees was the castle. It does it pretty much immediately. Uh, the, this hooks up on your motherboard using a pump and a CPU header. Not all of them do that. That's why I make that distinction. But I set the performance mode on the hardware monitor, like uh, on the uh, CPU header, so that it gets uh, it starts running 100% uh, fan speed at 75 degrees. Uh, so all of them where that accounts for will be there. And then I set the pump header to run at maximum speed. So this thing had a full run and pump and uh, the fans ramped up pretty much immediately to their max RPM of 1800. And it wasn't able to keep the CPU under 85 degrees basically at all. And then after running the test for 10 minutes, it capped out at a maximum temperature of 90 degrees. So this guy's the worst. And that's not terrible. I mean, 10900K, my 9900K with most of these coolers would have got to over 90 degrees. So that lower voltage is really helping this out. And uh, I was surprised I didn't see like 95 or 100 degrees on any of these guys. So pretty good result for the deep cool. It's just not the best on the bench, unfortunately. Uh, it hooks up fairly easily, like the, you know, out of the box, you gotta hook up your fans and stuff like that. No RGB on the fans, there is RGB on the pump. It comes with an RGB controller if you wanna do that kind of thing, or you can plug it into your motherboard. It's a solid cooler. I've used it in a bunch of builds, and uh, you know what? I'm not gonna say it's terrible or anything, but it's honestly just the worst on the list, unfortunately. So which one do you think came in fourth place? Galahad, ooh, Galahad AIO, new one from Lee and Lee, and I was expecting the pump to be Ace Attack or to be something recognizable. It looked like they developed it in-house or just at least an AIO I hadn't seen before that's being copied. It has this nice RGB pump and header, and it's the only one that has RGB fans on the list here, mostly because these are going for performance-oriented people, I think, and they wanna put their best fans on this, which aren't usually RGB fans. Galahad's a little different. They put some RGB fans on there. Beautiful looking AIO. I really like the gunmetal on the uh, the uh, rad. I like the little button you can put instead of the Lian Lee logo on there. But the way it mounts is terrible. And uh, fans, they're a little bit audible. They weren't bad. I didn't do any like DB testing on the fans, but most of them were okay. And I'll tell you which one was the loudest in a second. Uh, wait, which one was the loudest? The castle. The castle's got the loudest fans. That makes sense. Uh, 1800, 1800. Wait, 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 wait. They're all 1800 except for the Lian Lee does 1900 and uh, the Kraken does 2000 RPM. So just keep that in mind if you care about that. But they're all within 300 RPM of each other. So not doing too, too bad. But the loudest was the Deep Cool. The Galahad, I think, came in second place. Uh, and uh, you know what? 87 degrees hottest temperature after 10 minutes and it was able to hold out for 30 seconds before it hit 85 degrees so a lot better in the initial uh ramping up uh temperature keeping under control good for quick spikes you know when your computer's just doing a little bit of work you know for a, a second real you know hammering the cpu it's able to actually keep that in check for about 30 seconds which is pretty good and 87 degrees pretty damn awesome so not too too bad third place Corsair. Corsair comes in third place only because IQ software. Because as far as the difference between it and the next one on the list, not too, too much there. I just, I don't like you have to use Corsair's IQ software. Maybe some of you have a bunch of Corsair peripherals and you already have IQ on there and then it gives you some granular control. I kind of like when things hook up the regular way. The last two ones, they just, you know, the pump plugs into the pump header, the fans plug into the fan header. They come with splitters so that you can plump, uh, plug all three of the fans into this, you know, same slot. That's really, really nice. Corsair, all the fans plug into the pump essentially. The pump has a USB header that plugs into your, uh, you know, your motherboard, and then you're able to control what the pump does in the IQ software. I set all of those to like a performance mode or like a max mode, ran the test, Max temperature 
after 10 minutes, 87 degrees. So, you know, we're getting pretty similar results here for the Corsair, for the Galahad, a little bit more, three degrees on the castle so far. Uh, and the Corsair took, what was it? A minute and nine seconds to get to 85 degrees. So a little bit better result than the Galahad. And, uh, you know, I was able to keep things under control for just a little bit longer, but still had a maximum uh, of uh, 85 degrees. And the fans on there are a little bit louder than the rest of these guys. And that's actually why I handed the second place win off to Arctic. The, I really like this, this cooler. In fact, I was hoping it would come in first place. They went to the drawing board and Arctic actually sent me designs for this thing like three years ago. And it looked pretty close to this. I told them to keep that stupid little fan off of the chipset thing on the, on the pump. They didn't do that, but uh, they've been working on this for a very, very long time. And instead of using Asetex, they went and made their own. And they really did something different. If you've seen this thing, it comes out of the box with all the fans hooked up on it. All the fan wires then run through the sheathing on the pumps, uh, on the, uh, the, the hoses, so that you only plug in one uh, fan header to your CPU header and then it controls everything itself. There's no software to worry about. And that would give me pause because you'd think you'd want a little bit more control over your fans. But with this CPU header set to performance, it got the second best result, 87 degrees. Uh, it took um, you know, after the 10 minutes. So the same as the Galahad, the same as the Corsair. So the uh, max temperature was 87 degrees. It was still the same, three degrees better than the deep cool. However, it's ease of installation, super easy to set up. And it's really low RPM, really like low sounding fans, really efficient fans is what gives it the win over the Corsair. I think some people might like the Corsairs a little bit better. I like the Arctic better. It looks better. There's no RGB on the pump. It like it is easy to set up. The fans are quieter, but it did take uh, 55 seconds to get to 85 degrees, which is about 15 seconds uh, worse than the Corsair. But I gave the Arctic the the win just for its ease of installation, its looks, and uh, its quiet fans. It, it's totally worth it. So that brings us down to the Kraken X73, which is the winner here. It has the highest RPM on the fans, 2000. And uh, some weird things about this over the X71, and there is um, uh, a different one that has like an LCD on here, but it's essentially the same uh, cooler. So this kind of goes for both. It depends on whether you like an LCD or just RGB on your pump. But um, last version, all of the fans plugged into a header on the pump and then you controlled, like it's the same, you hook up a USB to the pump on this thing. And uh, the old one used to be able to control the pump, the lights, and the fans all in their cam software. This version, for some reason, they want you to plug in your fans yourself onto the headers on your motherboard. And they kind of, they don't even give you a splitter to put all three of them into the CPU header, which is the way I like to do things. You might say like three fans on one header, isn't that like too much? No, it's not. It's not. There's plenty of power coming out of motherboards these days to power three fans off of one header. And that's what most of these guys do is they include when you do plug them in on the motherboard, a little you know, header to do that. So yeah, I said that, you know, a motherboard of performance so that, you know, it's spinning the fans up at 75 degrees to max RPM. And uh, it actually took a minute and 30 seconds to get to 85 degrees and stayed there the entire rest of the test. It never went over 85 degrees after 10 minutes. So it was two degrees better than any other of these guys and five degrees better than the castle. It has pretty uh, low sounding fans. I'd say the only quieter fans on the list are the Arctic ones, even though these run at 2000 RPM. So the fan development on NZXT's part is really, really good. And uh, really the, the fans only can do so much uh, as far as cooling things. I think it's like pump performance, how much liquids in the radiator, how good the pump is, how good the uh, you know the uh, little micro fins are on the the cold plate stuff like that, and it seems like all these companies have gotten to a point where they've reversed engineered Asetek, or they've you know they're they're all kind of doing the same thing enough that they're within five degrees of each other. They're like within if you account for the you know it being nine, between eighty five and ninety degrees, that's about four percent. Uh, you know, variation between all of these guys. 
And uh, I would say, you know, as far as ease of installation or features, they're all very, very similar. So in the end, one, two, three, four, five. However, you can't go wrong with any of these guys. They're gonna cool the 10900K. There is something to be said about Ryzen. Maybe I should do this test over again with a high-end Ryzen CPU just to make sure because some say that this guy is the best for Ryzen and I have not done that test myself so I'm not going to you know rule that out but as far as all these guys on the table if you need a high-end CPU cooler because you're cooling a 10900K or a 3950X I think all these guys are going to be within five degrees of each other and it's going to be actually between these guys here which one's available in your area which one's the best value and maybe, you know, what, what, what kind of setup do you want? Do you want granular control on the motherboard, you know, doing things the old school way? Or do you want, you know, really precise control in some sort of software like CAM or IQ? Maybe you'll go with these guys. Maybe you got lots of Corsair peripherals and you don't mind adding that to your list in your IQ software. Maybe you got an NZXD case and one of their fan controllers and you don't mind using the CAM. But ultimately on the table here, which one would I pick if they were all the same price? This this guy or this guy, I don't know. It would depend on the build, I think. Uh, you know, whether I wanted an RGB pump or I wanted ease of installation and some robot foot looking thing. In the end, not a lot of difference, but NZXT comes out king with a runner up being the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 and it's innovative, different design that ends up, uh, I think, uh, you know, being the more quiet, subdued, uh, you know, uh, guy on the table that I might pick first. Or that one, I don't know. Anyway, I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching me ramble. Keep, keep it sleazy. <laughs>